Today we're here with Alex Ramji, lead hardware designer at Innovation Energy, and he's going to help us understand contactors. So Alex, what is a contactor? Yeah, so a contactor is fundamentally a switch, but it's a switch that's used to control high power. Got it. Um, what sorts of high power applications does Nuvation Energy um, use contactors for? Uh, yeah, so uh, we typically use contactors in a, in a battery stack, and it's usually our, our primary means of connecting and disconnecting the stack to either a DC bus or a power conversion system or an inverter. Got it. Connecting and disconnecting the stack. So how does the contactor do that? So the contactor, it, it works with, the, uh, with a coil. And so uh, you have two leads here that are expecting a voltage. In this case, it's a 24 volt signal. And what that does is it energizes a coil within the contactor. And that coil creates a magnetic field that closes the contact. So we actually have a little demonstration here that we can show you this. So I've got a few 9 volt batteries here that I'm going to connect to the coil. And as I do that, you can see that the contact then is, uh, is pressed closed and closes the contacts that are exposed to you on the outside. Great! Now I understand how that contactor works as a switch. You've got two different contactors there, Alex. They look really different from each other. What, what are the differences? Yeah, so these are two contactors from different manufacturers. But they actually have a, a fundamental difference in that this is a uni unidirectional contactor and this is a bidirectional contactor. So what that means is with the unidirectional contactor, you actually only flow current in one direction at the full rating. If you try going through in the other direction, it's actually a reduced rating. And, and you have to work with the manufacturer to understand what that limitation is. Uh, the reason for this is because these contactors contain magnets inside that are used to control uh, or suppress the arcs. Uh, in this case though, we have a bi-directional one. And what that means is it doesn't matter what direction the current's flowing, it can operate at full load in both directions. The way that they've done this actually is by using two different magnets and the, the magnets are in a way such that you get a magnetic field in one direction on one side of the contactor and a magnetic field in the opposite direction on the other side of it. And so when you are passing current in either direction, you've got a magnetic field in the corresponding correct direction to suppress that arc. Interesting. Can you show us the inside of that again? That looked pretty cool. How does yeah. that work? So in this case, we just saw our demo where we closed the contacts there. In this case, it's a similar principle. We have a, a spot to provide power to the coil. And in this case, it closes like this. What's that uh, doohickey there in the top with the three prongs coming out? Yeah, so that's a micro switch. Uh, the micro switch is used to actually provide feedback for the contactor. So when you provide coil power from uh, your system, and typically that's controlled through a, a battery management system, you, you need to understand or know that you've actually, the, the state that you expect the contactor in is the state that it's in. And so in this case, if you were to close this contactor, the switch closes and you'd be able to see a signal that indicates that the, the switch is closed. If you de-energize the contactor, you expect the switch to open and, and have a signal to, uh, to show that. This is important for if the uh, contactor was to weld, in which case the state that you expect it to be in may not actually be the state that it's in. And what happens when the state that you expect it to be in is not the state that it's in? Uh, typically, that's a reason to be in a fault condition. So if you have a contactor that's welded and, and you're expecting to open the stack, then you need to open up other contactors to de-energize that stack. Uh, it's the same thing we have with this contactor, actually. You, you can't see the micro switch in this case because it's embedded in the product, but we have two, uh, two wires here that are used as the feedback. Got it. Well, thank you for your time today, Alex. And that ends our tutorial on contactors.